The ignition factor was developed for the Super Nintendo by Jelko, who are best known for basis loaded carrier. Arch is the cause of everything! Damn! Hey, what are you doing? And Earth Defense Force. No, not that EDF, this one. Each level is broken up into stages, and they allow you to pick which stage you wish to tackle Mega Man style. Before the stage begins, you get a short debrief on the situation you're about to enter, as well as a floor plan of the building. You aren't allowed to view this map in the stage, so memorising it is key. You're also able to pick where to place the fire engine, which will come into play later. Your final act is to pick what your loadout for the mission will be. You have fire axes for breaking down doors, a rope to get across gaps, different types of fire extinguishers, and a poker to poke the floor. Picking too much equipment will slow you down, making you unable to run, jump, and kick down doors. You really have no clue what items to take on a mission. The first time you play in the debrief, they will mention which type of fires will be present, electrical or chemical, but they won't mention if you need to bring a rope to get across gaps, or if you need to check for holes. I'm not saying the debrief should just say, hey, bring this and this and this, but you could mention that the building has unstable flooring or explosions have been heard, so that you can at least use your intuition and make at least an educated guess. It's not really that much of a big deal if you come across an obstacle you don't have the tools for, as you can restock and resupply at other firemen you find in the stage. So in the stage, your main objective is to rescue a certain number of civilians, and while most of them can be rescued by wandering a level and putting out the fires along the way, some require a little more problem solving in order to get to. Some will act like dead rising survivors and refuse to move unless you've already rescued someone else on the other side of the map. And of course, like the good fireman you are, you just leave this vulnerable person in a room filling with smoke with the temperature rising. Others will require you to help them out, like this guy who wants me to lower the temperature of the water so he can swim across. Not sure how cool the water needs to be, the thermometer that shows up says 100, so I'm going to assume the water needs to be 100 Celsius, and the man swims to the other side with extreme burns and looking like a tomato. Then you get to this guy who's balanced precariously on a sheet of breakable glass. Suppose I just need to jump over to him? There we go. Okay, guess not. Oh yeah, you need the rope to swing across Indiana Jones style. Uh, no? Really? Okay, for real, how do you get to this guy? No one else has played this game, there are no detailed walkthroughs or playthroughs showing how to get to this guy. Alright, you know what, there are other people who actually want to be rescued, and they are burned to a crisp right now because of you. Good luck getting out on your own, here's something to remember me by. Oh. Oh. Oh, of course, you just... You just, you just hack, hack the guy with an axe and then... Then you can rescue him. As you navigate the stage, time is key, and in the early stages you aren't really rushed and can take your time exploring the level, but as you get further in the game, you will need to pick up the pace or else risking running out of time. However, blindly running can leave you jumping into fire you had no way of knowing was there. And I feel this happens way too often, I cannot begin to count the number of times I walked into a room only to be burnt, thrown out of the room, and fall right on my ass. And of course the door animation stops time. So you run towards a room, the door opens, time stops. You run into the room, door closes, time stops. You get hit by the fire and flung back. Door opens, time stops. You fly out of the room, door closes, time stops. You get up, walk into the room, door opens, time stops. Walk around the fire, door closes, time stops. Amazing. There is a button that lets you see into the rooms before entering, but it makes you walk, and when you only have one minute to find the last survivor and then escape, you'll be falling on your ass a lot. Also, the fire in this game is a bit of a dick. Fire spreading is a common theme in firefighting games, and thankfully, in Ignition Factor, it's not too bad, but I swear the fire will put a little flame right in front of you, almost like it's this is a Wile E. Coyote cartoon, and it's sticking its leg out just to trip you up. And this happens way too often to be a coincidence. As the levels get more complex, you will be performing side objectives in order to save civilians. These can range from finding certain items, stepping on dinosaur tickets, or this where some idiot will blindly walk into fire in order to save a stone mural. And this is way harder than it needs to be, there's just no time to react. If the screen was zoomed out just a bit, I could deal with it. Or if he just indicated which way he was going. Also, if he gets hit, it resets the tile. Fortunately, he's invincible, but this side mission can eat up time, and once you start it, there is no way of cancelling it. In between stages, the firefighters have conversations with one another, which allows a bit of breadth and levity to the situations which you go... Oh. Betty died? But... She was doing so well the last time I saw her.
Well, who are we gonna have to replace her? Yeah! I am Nikos! I'm here! He's from video games, his name is Nikos. So yes, the characters will often break the fourth wall and even comment on how poorly written the script is, and even make fun of the gameplay mechanics. One thing I find a bit odd is the lack of music. There is a short musical sting at the start of every level, and whenever you get a message. But other than that, it's completely silent, with just the sound of the raging inferno. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I'd like some music to rock out to as I'm putting out fires and axing survivors, but it does help me focus when I'm running around and just waiting for the fire to trip me up. After every level, you are rewarded points, which when you reach enough, increase your health. You can get points by how many people you save, how long you took, if you took part during an event, and any items you have collected. However, sometimes points can be reducted if the item you save is damaged. As if it was your fault the Ming vase was busted while you were carrying some fat boiled tomato out of the burning building. Also, if you pass on some of the items you find to the other firemen so you can free up some inventory space so you can run right into some fires, those points are lost to you. I like to think that the firemen you handed them into took credit for finding them. This fireman crew is cutthroat. The game is relatively short, with only three levels and eight stages in total. However, you were unlikely to beat the game first try, as a lot of the game will be spent memorising where to go and what to bring, as well as taking stupid deaths by things you wouldn't expect on your first playthrough. However, when you master the game and acquire over 5,000 points, you'll be able to access the final level. Or you could just look up a password online. Not really sure why this level was locked off, it's not particularly difficult. I guess you need to manage your limited ammo more carefully, but other than that... Jesus Christ, what the hell is that? Oh God, he boot you abomination! Jesus, there are tanks filled with these things! Get stars on this, not some accident prone fireman! Oh no, this one's pink! which means it can really take a beating. Oh god, how do I fight such a creature? Wait, this is what that man wanted to teach me. The importance of an ax to the face. <sighs> right, last survivor. Oh, okay, where were these guys when I was fighting that pinky back there? Now this game was never officially released in Europe, and if you find that you don't feel like going out of your way to buy a Japanese Famicom or a North American Super Nintendo, you can tr attempt to navigate the Wii eShop and purchase this game via the Virtual Console. And because this game was never released in the Europe's, then that means that it has a slightly higher price than all the other games! Isn't that lovely of Nintendo to do? This game is also available on the Wii U Virtual Console, but only in North America. So that's Ignition Factor, and with that done, the only thing left to do is to see how this game rates on my completely arbitrary and made up thing called the Tower of Hotness. with its quirky characters, varied settings, multiple items, and a great last level, Ignition Factor reaches Inferno status. So until next time, don't forget to read the video games magazine.